Hello, my name is Hobo Tom, and welcome to the Hobo and his girlfriend podcast. My girlfriend successfully made it back to Texas. Yes, wonderful. Yes, I don't know why people are going to Texas anyway. Yeah. Hot snakes. Famous the I saying there. I'll tranquil it up. And welcome to the Hobo. And his girlfriend podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. I'm about to go do some hoboing myself, but I wanted to talk about Lucha Underground. You know, one of my preferred wrestling shows. It's an hour long, so it's kind of pretty quick and simple. Um, again, if you like these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. I think one person sent a dislike. I'm gonna be on the naughty list. I don't know who though. Probably because I didn't show enough stuff. We'll figure. I'll, I'll I'll figure that out later. Analytics! Yes. Good with numbers. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you dislike, please feel free to send an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Or even more important, if you do like, you can send an email too. Or send a comment. A um, couple of programming notes. I know tomorrow I'm going to put up my SmackDown review. Might also. Do a TNA review. I haven't or Impact. I haven't done that in a while. And then probably on Sunday or Monday, the New Japan Pro Wrestling when world. Yes, when worlds collide. And my ticket for those of you in the Friendo Facebook community. I do look forward to seeing you there. There's a couple other people I know that I hope we will get forward to seeing there. Uh, maybe do some live interviews. Do some journalism. Yeah, you never know what, what happens. I know I plan to be there about 6.50. Again, I think they're going to have a meet and greet. Here. I know the gate's open. Doors open at 7 o'clock. Show starts at 8.30. Again, it's always there on the ticket. It'll be kind of cool. So you shall see Hobo Tom there. Again, it's time to talk a little bit about Lucha Underground. You verbing fun funky. There we go, that's better. Um, really, I, I like the way Lucha Underground really starts its shows. Let's figure out something for that back door, too. I'll think of that later. But, again, I like the fact that they have a very quick recap. They don't spend 10, 20 minutes. I think they only spent like two minutes kind of recapping from the start of the season. So, so that's good. It makes it quick. Um, they start off with an opening sequence with the Worldwide Underground. Johnny Mundo is creeped out by Ricky Mundo's doll. Kind of freaky that a grown man's with some Mex doll from Mexico. Again, more so than, more so, um, Johnny Mundo is just looking forward to laying a butt whipping down on, on Helico. Is Ricky Mundo and Helico? Or is he related to an Helico? We'll find out. Um, <laughs> Jack Evans has an open challenge. And actually, that was, that was, that was pretty good. The, the one thing about Lucha Underground is that you always have to be ready to expect the unexpected. Because it was a Jack Evans open challenge or whatever they call it. He, of course, takes the mic from Melissa Santos, who is truly great on the mic. She understands the crowd. And she knows she has that cadence. Um, and if you follow wrestling or go to live events in the cadence, and the following lucha is scheduled for one fall. Pause, and the whole crowd goes, one fall. And then she just smiles. She acknowledges, yeah, I'll play it to the crowd. It was fun. One fall. So she, uh, the challenger is Exolicious. Never heard of him before. And then, of course, you have the man, the myth, the legend, Jack Evans from heaven. I did a terrible, but again, it was good. 
the incredible thing about Lucha Underground is for the most part, they understand the crowd. They understand the match type. They know what matches to let breathe, what's the comedy match, what matches need, need to be short, how to do in-ring promos, make them effective. Just all the stuff that the WWE to lack Impact yeah gets it sometimes sometimes they don't get it. So again, Lucha Underground kinda understands this. But again, more for the match. It was a fun match. I mean there's again there's really good action. Trying to get his breath and back up to his feet is that delicious here. Jack on his way in. And again, it's fun, fast paced. So the pacing, even for being a short match, is really good. Um, there's moves being pulled out. The go go playa. It's an old jujitsu move. I'm like, whoa, I could really do something to that guy. I'm like, that's awesome. And it was a really good first match. It got, I, I know, I don't know how the t taping works, but on TV, it's like, yes, this is good. Um, no one, everyone thought, I think Jack Evans was going to win. Again, this is a warning to Jack Evans. Unless your name is John Cena, do not have open challenges. Again, Seth Rollins, this is on you too. Don't have open challenges. Because Exolicious won. A shock. Never heard of him before. Then we have a Pentagon Dark interview. And the machine Brian Cage, I think. I forget, if it, I forget if it's Cage or Brian Cage. Just plays the beatdown. And this is great because this is like the New Japan tradition of just saying, I challenge you. I want your title. It's simple, direct to the point. I like it. Again, simple, direct to the point, that's effective. And of course, it does end with Strong showing why he should be the champion. Then we have the main event of the evening. And this probably lasted probably a good 30, 35 minutes, almost 40 minutes. You always have to figure there's always some wonky time with the ring entrances. And they always do a little tease at the end. But again, it's only a couple of minutes, so it's not bad. Um, this actually featured a, a 
three-way, three-way, three-way to the grave match, which is just really like your WWE casket match, except for when there are dos caskets. Lucha Underground, I said dos. Um, this was Mil Muertes, the man of a thousand deaths, versus Jeremiah Crane versus Phoenix. Again, this was a really fun match. They let it breathe. It was good pacing. Everyone got their spots. That was crazy, crazy spots. Jeremiah Crane, I think, actually, he did pile drive Phoenix onto the concrete into the in the stands areas. Phoenix was flying from like some top of closet thing. Mil Muertes and Jeremiah Crane. I'm a good distance. It's almost like a scaffold match. They're on their feet. Again, really fun. And again, with this, you have the idea of the contrast makes the fight. You have the idea of Phoenix, the high flyer, the, the, the true luchador, versus just this vicious, sadistic, he doesn't care who he or hurts, he doesn't care if he gets hurt. Jeremiah Crane, again, just vicious and sadistic. And then you just have the power person, the person who can just pick you up and throw you places at will in Mil Muertes. So again, styles make fights, and again, this was really fun. I'm going to show a couple of clips because, again, this had a highlight of them. It also featured the return of Eva Marie. All oh, right, everything. Oh, wait a second. That wasn't Eva Marie. That was Eva Lee. But she dyed her hair red and came out with all red everything. Again, the jilted ex-lover of Jeremiah Crane. Um, again, it was fun. I mean, there were some good spots. Um, the flips, and, and I don't know what happened, because I had to go take a shower. Because I went to the gym. I smell now, my couch smells. It's time for me to clean up and start cooking for dinner. But 
next thing I, I know, the Mill and Phoenix actually somehow broke the bottom rope. And again, whenever the ropes break, it just makes them more interesting. And you learn Phoenix does not need the bottom rope to do any springboard with. He can go up to that second rope in one leap. He, I think he went up to the top rope in one leap. Then yeah, it was just fun. Uh, after that, kind of long story short, Mill Morris wins. Again, it's his match. It, it, it's like the Undertaker winning a casket match. You know the Undertaker's going to win a casket match. That's his gimmick match. Well, this, the three-way to the grave, is Mill Morris' gimmick match. It was good. Yeah. Melissa Santos was sex. I think her and Phoenix were an item. I don't know if that's real or at least kayfabe or, or storyline. So, like, when she's like, and again, it was fun. It was enjoyable. It's just what it should be. Oh, I forgot my rating systems. Jeremy goes from the least favorable match at the piece of toast. Again, it's a piece of toast. To the best match, which is the filet mignon. So this match, I would definitely give the filet mignon to. The previous match with Jack Evans, you know what? It was fun. Did Jack Evans miss a match? Props in a hobo production is a cheeseburger. Okay. Um... Go away, cheeseburger. Yeah, that's, 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 that's enough. I, I do enjoy my props. And yeah, I'll probably have some more things coming out. And that was, that was really it. That was all the matches. It was only two ma two matches, one good promo, one backstage. And then it was, it was only like two minutes, and it sets up the next episode in which... Oh, I forget his name now. Not Dara Koya. His father unleashes the monster Matanza. So we'll see what happens next episode. Um, hopefully I'm not working next next Wednesday or working, maybe. I don't know. I'll also be hoboing. You might see me around town because, again, I am going to the New Japan show. I look forward to seeing all of those in the Friendo universe there. I think a couple days ago they did ask who was going to the New Japan Daytona. I said, Hobo Tom will be there. And there will be others there. So I get to create more videos and give you guys more free content. Again, please like and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment or email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And I look forward to seeing friendos at the New Japan Show. Yes! When worlds collide. Everyone have a good night. And tomorrow will be the SmackDown Show. Bye.